Hello everyone, this is Melvia, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to take a look at Nomads. So Nomad is a, a card-based solo or GM-less co-op RPG uh, set in Infinite Universe. And uh, this is an interesting game because um, I think this game brings quite a lot of interesting things to the uh, solo RPG uh, genre, if you like. Uh, so initially I've not heard of this game and uh, until I uploaded the rolling uh, video and someone in the comment uh, uh, suggests that there is a, a huge soul RPG community in Brazil and uh, he also recommended a few games and uh, Nomad is one of it and I've checked it out indeed um, this is a wonderful game and uh, you can see by some of the uh, the design of the book and also with the uh, the illustration this is simply a brilliant looking game um, you can find this PDF on uh, drive through RPG um, I've decided to print it out myself uh, just because I think this is uh, too good to to use just use for a, uh, a PDF so what is uh, Nomads? So in the Nomads you are basically playing as um, the chosen ones if you like that has the abilities to go through um, different uh, universes. So this is a multiverse um, kind of game uh, and uh, you can basically go from you know uh, your own world to another one that might be similar to your own but there will be changes. So maybe in, the, in another world um, you know, the, the, the house you're living in is actually not owned by yourself, it's uh, lived by someone else, or, you know, you, you don't have a job in, uh, in an other universe, or you become a, yeah, uh, a billionaire or something like that. So, uh, so yeah, so that's a very interesting um, kind of genre in the first place, because I don't think that is being explored by a lot of games. Uh, I think there are a few, the likes of Planescape Torment, or Numenera, for example, uh, but they're not exactly the same anyway. Um, so, how to play this game? This game actually requires uh, only a uh, deck of cards, and obviously you will still need your character sheet uh, to play, uh, and obviously the book itself. So this game uses the uh, deck of cards as your replacement for your typical um, your dice, in this case, and I think that's quite brilliant. I've always looking for uh, alternative or new ways to play uh, solo role playing games, um, especially uh, trying to move away from uh, dice. Um, and that's because uh, sometimes if you are you know traveling on the uh, on a train or maybe in the library, then uh, you don't want to uh, use your dice uh, to to roll, and uh, you might want to just use your uh, your cards instead and uh, this game does provide a very interesting system that replace the, uh, the your normal dice rolling and also it does provide uh, quite an extensive um, so, you know, card drawing tables in this case that uh, provides majority of the things that you need when you play a role playing games like you know what kind of equipment you're gonna get uh, you know what strange things is happening what kind of consequences you know whether uh, your enemy creatures and and so forth. So uh, we are going to straight into the uh, gameplay and uh, so how to create your character. Um, the character creation is really simple in this game. Uh, all you need is uh, to have a name, um, your conflict will be your main personal struggle and also probably your own personal uh, goals uh, when coming into this game. 
Um, your character is uh, defined by just a, a description, type, and uh, speciality together. So this will be three kind of words. So just to give you an example, description might be you're strong, you're weak, or you are you know, agile and so forth. Type will be who you are. So this can be any kind of types. It can be your career. It could be your professions or, you know, it could be a, like a, like a, a strong-headed uh, policeman uh, and specialized in uh, probably tackling or investigating uh, murders, for example. And that will be your, uh, your definition of your character. And uh, you, your character will have 20 health points. And uh, I didn't mark it here. So we just basically, you know, mark a, a wound whenever we get one. And by the time we get to 20, then, uh, then we are on, uh, we, we're not down in that case. Um, this game works in uh, with two other stats. The main stats will be your strength. This is basically how much your attack value is. So when you are unarmed, you will have just plus five. If you equip it uh, with some kind of uh, uh, weapons, uh, then you will get some uh, uh, better values. So in this case, for example, so for example, you can see if you have some uh, weapons like a knife, you will get seven instead of your typical five. And if you have something more uh, stronger, then you will have like a shotgun that will give you like 20 uh, and, and so. So um, it will give you an advantage. And then you will also have your protection. If you're not wearing anything that is protective, then you only have zero. Uh, but if you are wearing something like a, like a leather jacket or so, then you will get some protection from that. Like uh, having a bulletproof um, uh, vest, then you will get a protection of five. So you will subtract that from from, from your uh, from the enemy's attack, and apart from that, you will also have some talents, and uh, you will also have your belongings. So talents. So talents are your typical um, traits in that case. So you can be like agile, attentive. You could be charismatic, and so forth. Um, and so it's just a general kind of description. They, some of them do give you like uh, plus strength or plus, plus protections, but majority of them are general descriptions. And uh, because in this game, the way it works is whether you can do something or if you can succeed a challenge is based on a very simple system. And that also works for all your normal oracle questions, you know, your yes, no questions in this case. And the way this works is everything is going to be categorized into four groups. Uh, so, so four groups are trivial, which is your basically always yes question. So you don't even need to draw any cards. Um, and then the next one will be logical questions. So in this case, to give you an example, you might want to uh, check if you can just uh, walk into a, uh, a bank uh, unnoticed um, and basically if you don't have any criminal records then that might be uh, just a logical question that no one's going to check or your ID or so forth so uh, what you need to do is draw a card and if it's a black suit then you the answer will automatically be yes in this case so um, in our case let's say uh, if we draw the uh, this one then it will be a no so we can't do that so there will be other questions that is uh, more illogical. So let's say if we can jump through a 10-foot fence, uh, and that will probably be a more complicated issue. So uh, they will be like a illogical question. Uh, and in that case, if we just uh, flip through this ones, uh, and um, again, if there's any red suits, then, uh, then it's just a no. So in this case, there is a no. And the, the, the most difficult task will be the impossible task. So in that case, you need to draw three cards. And in this case, obviously, this is uh, also a no. Um, but the talents comes into place when you think that it is uh, helpful to your actions. So let's say, again, if we are answer answering that questions, if we can jump through a 10 foot tall uh, fence, and uh, if you happens to be you know, really strong or athletic or something uh, that is helpful, then uh, you might want to say that, well, it is not really illogical. It is actually a logical thing because I do that all the time. My character is supposed to be able to do that. So in that case, you reduce the difficulty from illogical to logical. So instead of drawing your normal two cards, you draw one card instead. So in that case, you succeed. So 
Uh, it is a relatively simple system, Oracle system. Uh, so we are going to look at how we're going to create your our character. So, um, so first of all, you need to give your character a name and uh, age. I'm not sure why age is uh, is a matter here, to be honest. But uh, I have decided to call myself uh, Felnim, who is an uh, adult. Um, I guess the adult is something that is useful because it, it probably dictates what kind of adventure you will get into. Conflict. So conflict is a little bit complicated. Uh, you can obviously think of your own uh, conflict in this case, uh, but there is some tables that is probably useful. Uh, so for example, we can look at the problems table. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a look. So let's just draw one. So this is uh, Jack. So this is Diamond, the character. So that the character nine, which is uh, you need to settle the score with an NPC. So uh, from that you can generate a story. Uh, again, it might be a little bit too dry for you. If that's the case, then you can also roll on other other kind of. Uh, tables for example your final objective so you want to uh, resolve a score with an NPC but what exactly is that related to so Kane uh, that is a, a stuck up or free and then another King so duck up or free a Medusa so Medusa is a bit interesting this is uh, a specific thing in this world and they are like portals. Uh, these are the ones that allows you to go through uh, the universe from one to another. And these are extremely rare to find. So in this case, we have a free, maybe a free Medusa, or dig up a Medusa in that case. And uh, what else? Uh, which is a heart. The final objective is linked to an enemy, if any. So just from that, you can get a little bit of story because we have to settle the score with an NPC and probably that NPC is our enemy and uh, our objective is to free a Medusa so to probably that one kidnapped or uh, took hold of a, a Medusa, Medusa or, hold, or held it uh, hostage from us, from our character and uh, we have to uh, we have to do something about that so I will come up with a little bit of story and uh, we'll see what we get from there so I have decided uh, the, the conflict is that uh, we are going to need to settle a score with Dominic and Dominic is uh, a homeless person because we wrote on the human NPC we draw uh, an ace and basically it is an adult homeless person and uh, I'm gonna say that he stole the uh, Medusa from us Medusa being the portal to another um, another world and I'm actually going to say because we are all a nomad uh, we are just traveling between uh, different worlds and uh, we are just you know taking our time chilling uh, doing being a tourist in that case but in one specific universe uh, we got into trouble because one homeless person uh, took our Medusa from us and uh, I'm gonna say Medusa is something that is uh, more or less like a um, like a mundane object, they look like a mundane objects. Maybe they are like a, a wallet, or maybe like a a pendle, a, a pendant, or you know, maybe even just like a pen. And uh, this homeless person uh, stole it from us uh, because it might look valuable. So uh, we need to track him down. We need to uh, the the score is that we have to uh, to get to Dominic in that case. So who are we? Um, in this case, we can actually. Uh, you can roll on this NPC table to see who you are. So in this case, we are actually going to see who our character is, uh, who Valnim is. Uh, and I'm going to get a four. So we are a criminal. Okay, so that's really interesting. And actually, you can get more details like what's your gender. Uh, we know our gender in this case is, uh, is a male and uh, is a criminal. And actually, we have a little bit of uh, details here as well. So we, I'm just going to use the uh, suit here. So we are criminal in danger. So 
probably that dangerous because uh, if we don't get our Medusa back, we won't be able to get back to our original um, universe. So we are being trapped in this multiverse, uh, getting lost. Um, I'm going to say that's the case. And what we need to do next is to describe our uh, description, type, and speciality. So I already know that we are a criminal. And I'm going to say we are a petty one. So we are not a, you know, a really serious one. We're just, uh, because we're traveling the universe trying to do sightseeing, actually, and probably to uh, get some easy money. Because just to give you an example, if you know that you can go to another world, uh, maybe steal some money from the bank without uh, having any consequences because you can go back to your original one. So I'm going to say I am a petty criminal who is specialized in um, lockpicking, who can lockpick. And then uh, obviously we start with unarmed, so with nothing to do with that, and we all have the protection of zero. And in terms of talents, um, so we also don't have any talents or any belongings from the beginning. We have a fate, so fate is almost like your reroll die. So you can, instead of drawing, taking the, the card value, you can spend that and, uh, and uh, draw another one instead. And then there's also the ruined uh, stat, and that uh, is me. So every time you use a fate, you will gain a ruin point, and that means that whenever you roll on strange things instead of just rolling one you will need to roll another one and take the higher value in that case so we know who we are we know what we need to do we need to find dominic uh so we're going to set up the the scene if you like so what is the season the episode one where are we uh and uh what is the weather for example you know where are we and uh what do we need to do immediately to, to, to help us find Dominic? And there, there are some tables that will help in this case. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check on the, uh, the weather. So the weather, there's a little table here. So I'm going to say, what is the weather like at the moment? So during the afternoon, so it's, sorry, actually it's the spade. So it's during the morning. So it's in the morning too, and it rains slightly. So, um, so not too bad and then where are we actually so let's see so there are two tables over here there's the places in the city or strange places i'm going to say that we are in a universe um, that is still similar to ours uh, given our uh, history so we are basically traveling just to do some petty crimes uh, steal from the bank or uh, or something like that or from the jewelry shops so we are going to check where are we at this point of time. And this is a heart. So an inhabited. And uh, I'm just going to roll another one. So it's king. An inhabited house. Uh, so that's very interesting. So that means that we are probably uh, doing some burglary at the moment. So we are just doing that. And... Uh, and I'm going to say that we just noticed uh, we were trying to, normally what we're trying to do is we're going to go into a house, do some burglaries, steal some cash, and then we're going to use the Medusa to just travel back to our universe. And at that point of time, we noticed that uh, our Medusa is gone. And we remembered in the morning uh, when we were going through, uh, you know, getting ready to get into this house, uh, we walk past this homeless guy who's called Dominic and uh, he touched, uh, you know, have a pat on our back and, you know, say, oh, hey, mister, um, do, you, do you have a, a spare spare coin or something like that? And uh, we said, well, we don't have one. And in fact, he, uh, Dominic, stole that Medusa from us. And I'm going to say Medusa is in the form of a wallet because that's logical that he's going to do that to seal from us. So really bad at uh, uh, criminal stuff because we got our own self uh, pickpocketed. Um, so what are we going to do next? So what I'm going to do next is uh, there's a table over here that allows us to say what is our immediate objective. And I'm going to roll on or draw on this to see 
what is our immediate objective, which is eight of um, of clubs. So club is a uh, activate core or convince, and what is eight? An ally. So I'm gonna say it is core and ally. So what I'm gonna say is we know of someone who is in this universe as uh, our partner in crime. So he's not a nomad, um, I'm gonna tell straight away, um, but he's always there, no matter which universe we go to, he's always there to buy our stolen stuff. So, because he has connections. So I'm gonna give him a call, and uh, I don't think that's uh, an important thing to, uh, to roll on, but what I'm gonna say is, is he, going to help us find him. So I can't tell. I'm going to say this is uh, maybe uh, logical because um, we have sold him multiple things before. In all the universe, he, he knew us as someone who is uh, one of his customer. So I'm going to say it's logical. So just draw one card if he's going to do us a favor and help identify Dominic. And no. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? So obviously in this case you can also read a little bit more into the how how much um, this uh, what is the the degree of that no in this case it's in the middle so eight is not you know it's not one of those uh, uh, royals or is not eight and two and three. So I'm gonna say he's not gonna help us, but it doesn't mean that he. That he doesn't know where this uh, Dominic is because this guy is uh, reasonably uh, well connected so he knows all these homeless people around that neighborhood and it's just because he wants something from us um, so it's not we can't do it for three and what I'm going to do is what he wants from us and uh, let's see what this uh, was this guy wants in us in order to give us that information? So the immediate objective. I'm gonna. In fact, I'm gonna use the final objective. What does he want us to do? So first one is a five. So protect seven. A secret cult. Okay, that is uh, quite interesting. And what does that mean to us? So. Uh, I'm going to use just a diamond over here. The final objective is uh, linked to an ally, if any. So it will be obviously this this guy, if he's an ally. A secret cult. So, protect the secret cult. How I'm going to interpret it is that um, he's actually in trouble. So this guy is in trouble. So the police in this world is looking after him. Uh, the reason why he is uh, buying all this stolen st stuff is because I would say they are, or they believe that um, they can get to uh, find something like a Medusa. I'm going to say that. So these are people who are aware of nomads, even though they are not. Maybe they don't know who I'm in a nomad in that case as well, but they are looking of ways to find these powerful artifacts so that they, they, they can also travel between universes. Um, I'm going to sort of say that's the case, and uh, these um, group of people, uh, they form themselves a cult, and uh, the police is going to look after them because they have been doing too much, they have been buying off too much uh, stolen stuff. So, uh, in that case, I guess, uh, I don't know if we're going to help him or not, to be honest. Um, I don't think I want to help them because we're just a petty crime criminal. Uh, we're just good at lock picking stuff, so uh, I don't think we are good enough to get into that kind of trouble. So um, I would say I'm gonna leave, uh, leave him. Uh, I'm gonna take it, take the matters to my own hand. I'm gonna try to find Dominic myself. So uh, what I'm gonna do is we can actually spend a uh, fate point to help us do that. So fate points, whenever you want to. Uh, like uh, get something like a, a plot twist or strange things happening, you can always, always spend them and then uh, you will get down by one and then you will gain one ruins. And what I'm gonna say is once I spend that point, I'm gonna draw on the 
uh, plot twist in this case. And uh, I'm gonna see how it's gonna help us find this guy. So let's roll on that one. Seven, which is a hostile stranger, strange creatures appears. Okay, so that's interesting. That means that we are into actions. So it is quite easy to just create uh, enemies or strange creatures in this game. Uh, all you need to do is just roll on a, a few um, tables or draw on a few tables in this case. So let's see what this creature looks like. A uh, diamond, so a human with a head like what? Like a wolf, so it's a wolf head person. And then you can also uh, see, you know, how what is the size uh, of of that. And uh, let's just check how big that thing is. Uh, a little bigger than a, than a normal person, so it's plus one strength as well. That's not good. Um, and how intelligent it is. So let's get that. So it's a uh, club. So it's superior intelligence, and it is strong. And uh, I guess in this case, uh, we will say that this wolf man, this wolf head man, uh, uh, comes to us, and uh, I would say he's a manifestation of this world coming to us because we did say that we are in trouble uh, if we don't get to uh, uh, Dominic uh, and get our Medusa wallet back. We will be. Uh, Attacked by this uh, this universe because they know where we are now. They have identified us So it's like the um, the agent Smith going after Neo in Matrix in this case So what I am going to do, I mean we are really weak. We're not even good at any combat skills So I'm gonna say that I'm gonna try to hide uh, Remember we were in the uh, in the house in the inhabited house. So I would uh, uh, imagine that we are in a residential area, so I'm going to hide under um, a shack of uh, a family. So I'm going to uh, lock pick it. So what I need to do is definitely lock pick it, and uh, I'm going to say it's logical that we can lock pick it because we are a uh, criminal. The only thing we're good at is lock picking. So let's say if we can lock pick into this shed and hide from the wolfman. And indeed, we can. So uh, now it's interesting because it comes with a jack, so it's a royal suit. And whenever we roll on uh, or we draw a royal suit, we will need to uh, uh, conjure up a uh, a strange thing as well. So, so let's see what strange hap what strange thing happens uh, when we uh, hide into this shed. And let's see what we have first. So it is a spade. Something good happens. Okay, that's good. And with the scene object. So what I'm going to say is uh, this shed is actually uh, uh, there's something in, in useful in it. So there is not just a uh, an empty shed or a shed with just your uh, lawn mower or something like that. It's actually something useful to us. And that is, let me just roll on the... And I'm going to roll on the rare equipment because um, I'm going to say that there is something interesting in this shed that is going to help us. And what we're going to get first is a spade, so a precarious, so it's minus two, unfortunately, if it is a, uh, a weapon or something like that. And it is not, it is actually a key, password, or access to an important place. So... What I'm going to say is this, I find a key that can, uh, that is the car key of the, uh, of the owner of that house. So they have left it there and it means that we now have access to a, uh, a car and uh, we can uh, use that car to drive that and go back to where we last met Dominic, I guess. And uh, and I'm going to do that. And uh, but we don't know where he is. Where is he? So I'm going to so I'm going to check on the places in the city. And first of all, I'm going to see how far is this. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to just check where where exactly is the location. I don't even need to worry about the uh, if it's inhabited or not. So I'm just going to draw one. 
which is uh, two apartment in the center. So I I would expect that to mean that it is an apartment uh, residential area in the center of the city. Uh, so we are in a residential area. I would assume that we're not in the same place because we we decided to uh, get on a car. So we need to drive there. So I would just say that it's trivial things. Uh, we're just going to drive there. And uh, I would even just say that you know, by the time we get there, it's no longer in the morning, as we suggested. Is oh, we're probably in the uh, in the afternoon by the by the time we reach there. And I guess the question is, is Dominic still where he is? Um, I would say is very uh, illogical because he would have moved to other places. He's probably the type of guy who just uh, steal from people and move on. Uh, and I'm gonna say that is illogical. So we'll see if that's yes or no. And indeed, no. So he's no longer there. Uh, so it's not very useful. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and ask some of the uh, the locals around there if they notice this uh, this uh, homeless guy, what is his routine is. So I'm gonna just grab a uh, pedestrian or a shopkeeper next, next, next to this neighborhood and I'm gonna ask him if he knows anything. Um, I would say it's logical that they have noticed this homeless guy. Uh, they would have noticed him, they would have known that he is the type of guy who steals from people. So it will be a logical thing that they know where all his routine is. Oh uh, no, unfortunately. So they don't know. Uh, so I would just say that's the case. Uh, people don't know where they where he went and in fact I'm going to interpret it as that um, Dominic seems to be different today. So he's not following his normal routine. Instead of just a straight no, I'm gonna say that he is actually not following his routine. He's going somewhere else. So I would say that he's actually aware of the lot, uh, the values of that Medusa. So he's not as innocent as he looks like. So what are we gonna do? What is uh, Melanie is gonna do is that uh, we are going to try to spend another fate. Actually, I forgot to uh, to use the other um, to use the ruin point. Actually, and I think it's a good time that I'm gonna house rules it, and I'm gonna say that the uh, the strange thing, another strange thing, is gonna happen. So that we are gonna take out our ruined points, and and something good happens. That's good. And with a character, so I would say that character is us. Um, so when we are just out of clues, uh, it seems that we we finally notice that uh, we we saw a glimpse of Dominic, someone who who looks like Dominic, um, at a corner of the street, and uh, it is quite uh, quite a surprise because we didn't expect him to be just showing up. Uh, in front of us and we are going to go after him so I am going to stop the uh, the gameplay here and uh, I think you will get quite a little bit of a taste of what this game will give you so there's quite a lot of useful tables here and uh, uh, this is more of a narrative uh, game so there's not a lot of gameplay experience uh, a lot of gameplay mechanics now you do have your life but if you don't get into like uh, combats then you're not really concerned about that uh, also your strength and protections that is out of the uh, the question as well so it's mainly about your uh, rolling on the table getting some narratives and going on as you can suggest from the, uh, the name of the company so uh, narrative experience of course so I would say I would say this is a game that is very interesting because it uses a card based system and uh, this is the first one that I've seen completely based on cards and uh, obviously there will be limitations because um, the number of randomness is limited compared to maybe a D66 table uh, or D100 table in that case but I do think this game is worth um, 
taking a look uh, because this one is beautifully put together product. You can see all these arts are really interesting. Uh, they are uh, they they give you quite a lot of um, narrative uh, inspirations as well. Uh, just reading them, you can get the kind of sense of this universe. So this is one of those that you want to inf uh, uh, get involved into the uh, the law, and also maybe come up with stories that's a little bit more uh, personal. So uh, maybe uh, you want to get this as something that is emotional stories and so forth. So. Uh, overall, this is a very interesting product. I do like what I see and uh, I'm very happy that I did print it out because this is a very good read and uh, indeed so if you have like time, um, if you like reading a book, uh, this is certainly a, a good read itself. Now there are a little bit of uh, translation issues unfortunately. This is this was originally written in Portuguese and translated to uh, English, so there are some uh, mistakes here and there, uh, namely some grammars and the use of pronouns. Sometimes you will see he being used as she and, and, and so forth, but uh, overall it doesn't ruin the experience for me. I still find it very interesting. Um, I think uh, the author here, uh, Marcelo, uh, Marcelo uh, Collar, I think he wrote the whole game. Uh, it is a really good product. I, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that he, he manages to come up with such a beautiful product all by himself, obviously with the help of some of the uh, others on this credits. And uh, I'm sure you probably can notice some of the names if you are uh, into the Brazil um, solo RPG community, like Diego Junges, who is the author of Ronin, which I have covered. And uh, so yeah, so uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I, I will talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.